Hans Justus von der Heidt was born in 1685 in Bonfeld, a small Lutheran community in the Rhineland region of Germany. The Heidt's story, like so many other German immigrants before them, begins as they were seeking relief from religious persecution and the crushing poverty following the devastation created by the French army during the War of the Spanish Secession in 1708. Hans and his wife Maria would flee the Alsace region of France, notably Strasbourg, which was being overrun by other German refugees. Sadly, of the three children they had, only one would survive the trip. Strasbourg was so overwhelmed by the refugees, they were sent to England by the government in Rotterdam, France. Poor and destitute, the Heights finally boarded the ship Hartwell, bound for New York in 1710. 1714, Hans and Maria would move to the German Quaker settlements in Pennsylvania where Jacob Height was born. Indian attacks along the frontier region of Pennsylvania posed a constant problem. By 1728, petitions were being sent to the government of Pennsylvania for relief from Indian attacks. It was during this time that a traveling Indian trader named John Van Meter was trying to persuade families to move to his settlement in Virginia. John was widely accepted amongst the local tribes. John and his brother Isaac obtained a grant of land from the colonial government at Williamsburg for 40,000 acres with the condition that they settle one family per thousand acres of land within two years. This agreement would bring Hans Justice Height and his family to settle in the area in the Shenandoah Valley near present Winchester in 1731. Justice Height would be one of the first documented settlers to reach the valley for the purposes of establishing a frontier colony. Jacob Height, Joss Height's son who built the house the Appalachian History Detectives will be featuring, constructed it for defensive purposes against the Indians during the outbreak of the French and Indian War of 1753. The structure has no internal stairs to the second floor and can only be reached by an exterior ladder where the women and children would stay during an attack. Join us in our metal detecting adventure. If this were a musket ball, or I mean a musket, musket barrel, but it's not. I mean it's modern. I'm hoping to hit into a Civil War camp down here 
it's nice and hidden and uh, looks good for that so let me pull you up here where I'm at so we'll just keep going and we'll keep checking Found a coin right here, and I think it is a rosy dime. But let's see. It is a 1997 dime. Okay, I found an interesting piece of iron here. So no doubt in my mind this is hand forged. Maybe an old gate hinge. I think that's what it was, an old gate hinge. All right, that's awesome. It's hard to tell how old that is. Randy said he got some interesting things. Yeah. Okay. So let's take a look. I got. Uh, now these are always good to find. You don't. You know you're on a good colonial site. Oh yeah. When you pull them up. Oyster shells. Yeah, I got a couple of those. Oh yeah. Yeah. Yeah, the Chig always talked about that. Yep, you find them out in the middle of nowhere, stop. Yeah. <laughs> and get real serious. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah. And you found those over here? Yeah, yeah, here in the yard. Okay, and uh, this building here, he said it was built in what, 1774, 75? Like yeah. Okay, so, yeah, so this is an early period yeah. house, and this is an early period house, 1774 here. And this house here was built in 1750. And uh, this little uh, well house here was built in around 1775, 74 to 78 in that time period. So very early. It's hard to tell what we'll find in this yard. But we're going to give it a, a look over. Oh, wow, you found a spoon. Yeah, unfortunately, I am the doer of that. It's a copper. Is it copper? Looks like it's got a little bit of copper on there. Yeah. Well, that's awesome, man. And then I found the handle that wasn't, well, I guess it could have been my break. I'm not sure, but it's super nice. I'll just turn it around here. Oh, wow, that's beautiful. Man, I bet that's silver. Yeah. So, you think that's silver? It has to be. Yeah, that's beautiful come out of the ground looking like that yeah so, at think, least silver plated yeah for sure silver plated I mean when you look because I did I think you can see where I broke it and it's you know it's not oh, silver it's plated, awesome man but yeah that's beautiful good find yeah yeah that came out first and I was like oh that's awesome and as I kept searching because I was like maybe I left the handle in there and yeah. I was like oh man the handles great <laughs> yeah well Randy's on the board I have yet to get on the board but I will be soon. I don't know if you can see, but there's the Jacob Height House, and it was built around 1750. And there's no stairs going up to the second level. So that top level up there, there's no access other than that, that platform coming out in the front. You have to access it by the stairs. They say that the, the men would be down on the first floor shooting at the Indians and the women and the children would be up on the top floor being protected from the Indians and then once it was clear they put the ladder up and let them down pretty interesting history here and a neighbor of Jacob Height was Horatio Gates the famous general in the Revolutionary War with uh, Thomas Jefferson I'm sorry with George Washington and um, he fled a battle. He fled a scene down in uh, South Carolina and he came back to here and he angered the Congress and he angered uh, George Washington. And so Horatio Gates went down in history as kind of uh, a traitor. But he, uh, 
He lived right here next to uh, the Heights. He knew them on a friendly and first name basis. And he was actually their magistrate. Uh, he was actually a judge and he helped Jacob get out of a financial bond that he was in to his creditors for a land deal down in the Cherokee Nation down in South Carolina. And, uh, but that's, that's the fort. nail. There's something else in this hole. Yeah. All right. Same hole. Same hole that I found this out of. I found this. And it's got a tapered edge right there. So it could be a wedge of sorts. All right, I found something that's interesting. I think it is what it is. It's pewter. It's a pewter spoon handle or utensil. But that's old. That's a good find. All right, Randy found an interesting artifact. You want to state what this is? Sure. This is the top of a lantern. This would have sat on top of, I guess, whatever it's called, the well for the uh, for the oil. And uh, through this little hole here would have had the wick that would have come out. And this knob would have controlled yep. just how much of the wick came out so that it would control the brightness. Uh, very good. Yeah. Like, like a kerosene lantern, there'd be a glass globe on there. Right, right. There oh, that's good. That go up. Mm -hmm. Way to go. Yeah, thanks. All right, Randy and I, we just finished lunch. We're getting ready to go out to start the second part of the day. And I'm just going to do it real quick. And I'll get rid of my apple. Um, here's some of Randy's finds here. You saw these already because I showed them to you. I didn't show you that. But I thought this was real interesting. There's an old knife. Is that an old butter knife, maybe? I don't know. I can't tell really? if it's serrated or if it's just chewed up. Yeah. You know? I mean, it still has an edge on it. Yeah. It's still pretty short. Yeah, that was down in this field. Down, down that I asked Randy what he thought that was. I don't know. Brass rivet, copper. It was reading 77, 78. You know, I bet that's a, a rivet. You know, you think that might be a rivet? I think so, but not sure. Maybe a different style than a saddle rivet. Yeah, it's old. You can see how it's been worked by, by a tool. All right, so there's some of the metal junk we got, bullets. And uh, we're going to go out and hit it again. All right, found a coin. Yep, found a coin. It is a modern nickel. Don't know what year it is. It's a 2000 nickel. Look at what I found in the front yard. No. What is it, Randy? What kind? I'll let you take a look. That's what it is. Sharps carbine. It's fired. Just didn't really make impact with anything, but. You can see, uh, oh, yeah, where it hit, yeah, Big scuff marks, and you can see these little lines where it would have, uh, you know, caught the rifling as it was leaving leaving the gun. 
Good one, man. Yeah. I yeah. wasn't expecting that. <laughs> no, not at all. Great fun. Thanks. First one of them out of the yard. Alright, I was digging in this hole here. And I had a pretty high reading with this. And I wonder if it's been hit. It's been hit right here. It's been hit right there. Got a sharp point. It's an interesting piece. An interesting artifact. It's a good find. Okay, I am still digging in this hole. There's something down in there. And looky here. Here, let me pull over here so you can see it. This teeth? Is that teeth from a horse or a cow or an animal or a person? I don't know. Interesting. Okay. I don't know what that is. I would say a handle or a knob. All right, Randy found a harmonica reed. Yeah, that's exactly what that is. Yeah. That's a great find. Yeah. The first whole one I ever found came out of this property. It was all the way over by the fort. But it was, you know, a whole one. You never wow. find whole ones. No, uh -uh. They're so hard to find. And well, that one's in great shape. It is. Yeah, I mean, it's cleaning up. Every wipe's yeah. a cleaner. Doesn't look that old, does it? Mm -mm. Just brass. Yeah. Very nice. What do you got? Don't know if this is a Civil War round ball or just a Pioneer round ball. But it definitely is a round ball. See? That's a good find. Thank you. 